Hello there, fellows, and welcome to episode number four of Tigers RC in Minecraft. It's been a long time in this world. It is day number 104. Each of these is worth 32 to get 96 and 8. So that's a lot of time. And I have been really busy. Really, really busy. Between episodes, doing a lot of stuff that really just needed to get done. You can tell already the witch hut looks a little bit different. I filled in the area around it and mined it all out. So eventually we're going to be able to automate this relatively easily now. Just have to set up the redstone and mine it out a little bit more. So that's good. Um, also over here I have not only done a lot of organization over here, I've smelted a lot of stuff. And this entire area that used to be water is now all land. Literally. Every single block. It's it's solid. It's not like it's hollow underneath with water underneath there. It's solid. All of this area. Solid land. That's probably what took the most time. So that was a lot of fun to do. Eventually I'm going to get some potatoes and put over here and we've got carrots and wheat and sugarcane, some of the basic farms. But this episode we've got a few smaller projects that will come together to make one bigger project that is extremely useful. So you can see we're in the base of our tree. It's not exactly a tall tree just yet, but as we walk inside, there's a nice little stairway coming down to this area. And in this area, I want to make my first AFK farm, besides technically those guys, because, I don't know, those guys can be AFK if you want them to, but it's not really quite the same. So right here, we are going to be making an automatic fish farm because I've made those before and they are amazing. They literally give you anything and everything that you want. So that's what we'll be making here. And so I'm going to collect some of the resources and then we'll get right to it. It's actually going to be Panda 4994's design, seeing as that is like ultra compact and really, really useful. And, yeah, we're going to have fish by the end of this episode. So, let's get to it. And here it is. I'm really, really happy with the way this thing turned out. Um, yeah, I moved the start switch so that when you press it, you're locked in here. And it, if I had any fishing rods, it would start shooting them out. And in the back there... I put in the Song of Storms from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time because I wanted to because we want it to rain because that gives you more fish so yeah I put it in there just just because I wanted to I think that's really funny but yeah um, this is the design and it's it's basically completed um, I'm gonna obviously have to put in a lot more fishing rods in fact I think that we should give it a tester right now make our first fishing rod like this and then we fill up all the other spots in our inventory and then we go in here and right click that and then we hold down right click and so what happens is I put I put a weight on my mouse and hold down right click and it will automatically fish for me. In just a sec you'll see we'll catch a fish and it'll pick up the fish for me and it'll put it somewhere else and um, yeah I'll automatically re-throw out the line when I've caught a fish. If I catch a fish. 
When I catch a fish, come on. Come on, fishy. There, there, come on. See? And there, the, the line's out again. And so, yeah. It'll be a little bit, I think. Come on, fishy. Do it for me. There. So, and then when we're done, we just turn it off. We put our fishing rod back in that dropper. And if we got more fishing rods, they would go in there. And we can see all the fish that we've caught. The other nice thing about this is that I built it right next to my double spawner. So when I'm standing here, both those spawners are active, and it will start spawning mobs. And our next project for this episode is to get all of these mobs and funnel them into the nether. You can see we completed the double spawner in episode 3, and we want to make it so that we can funnel them from down there into a specific spot in the nether. So when I'm done fishing, I can just um, walk a little bit away and go through a nether portal, and they'll all be one hit kill right in front of me. And I can collect all the loot and stuff, and yeah. Um, the other nice thing is it's right next to a wheat and carrot and sugarcane farm, and that's always nice because it means we can get wheat and carrots and sugarcane. Um, so yeah. I'm really happy with this. This is an awesome design. I'd really recommend you check it out. Links down in the description and all that. So now I'm going to get some stuff ready for the nether. This is the way that we mine obsidian. This is the way that we mine obsidian. Alrighty, we basically got what we need, and I'm going to actually open up F3 so that I can see my coordinates on the left there. You can see X370, Z117, etc, etc. And now, what I want to do is set up something right about here. Ooh. That's the redstone for the lights. Maybe not right here. I think I'll keep on going a little bit. Um, yeah, definitely gonna keep on going. Right. About here. This way goes up to the thing up there, which we might upgrade this episode. I don't know. And we're gonna set it up so that if they go this way, they're gonna run into a nether portal. But what we really want to set up is the little um, bit of redstone right here so that if we put a piston there and if we put a piston there, one of them and then we just have um, some cobble. We need some cobble. We need a redstone dust there and there. Maybe. We're gonna have to power one from underneath. Like that. Alright, so basically we've got redstone running along this way. And then right here, um, let me get out my torches, and then there, we'll get back out this way. And then right here, we've got a torch with redstone running into that piston. So that way, we don't have any mobs or anything on that side, and then if we if we go this way with it, um, put that back, and we get out our levers, you can see it switches 
it switches exactly the way we want it. And then if we've got a roof like this, they either go one way or they go the other way. Bang. So yeah, now we, we just have to set up the redstone so that it, it goes somewhere that we want. And a portal at these coordinates, 390, 111. 390, 111. One eighth of that in the nether is where we want our portal to be. Alrighty, here we are in the nether. I made a staircase from our lower portal. First one we did, it was back in the village. And I set down the two new portals. This one should lead to the mob spawner, and this one should lead back home. So let's check this out. And it should be above ground. Please tell me it's above ground. Why are we back here? What are we doing back here? Why are we... Alright, so we have to deactivate those two portals. And then we'll break this one and head all the way back. Alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on doing stuff with this, and I'll see you guys when I've got it working. Derpy me, derpy me. Okay, I made a big mistake. You can see in the top left the coordinates that we're at. Um, yeah, I mixed up X and Z. So down this hallway is where we're meant to be, and this one should be inside the mob farm, and this one should be outside. So here we go. This is right here, yes, this is where I want it to be. I'm gonna make it daytime quick, always a good idea. But that's right where I want that one to be. And if we go back through, it should be in the same spot. Should be right back where we were. Looking this way. And we'll see. Yes. Alright, it looks like we take damage from these things, so I'm gonna knock them out. And then if we knock, open this one up, we should be down inside of our mob farm. And yes, we are. Um, looks like the same exact thing happened, so I'm going to knock these out. I'm going to leave that one. But Alrighty. So that's inside of our mob farm. That one there. And so what I want to do is I want to make it so that all the mobs will fall out. And like, I don't know, fall down here. Like this. So any mobs that go through that will now fall into that hole. Especially if we were to block it off or something, then it would make it so that all of the mobs that were inside of there would fall down. I'm probably gonna get some glass to put here eventually, but now you can see we're on this level. Actually, what I'm gonna do, I've got the pistons, I am going to set up a little system that will funnel them all into this spot right here. So, all of them will get pushed off of these, uh, these pistons, and then the next one will push here, and then after that, the next one, actually, yeah, the next one will push right there. So that will put them all into this spot, right here. And from here, we can make a mob experience grinder similar to the one that I have in the overworld that will be extremely, extremely useful. So, I'm gonna get out of this hole. I'm coming out a 
few blocks, giving room, and then digging upwards like this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of that hole, collect a few more resources that we can make our experience grinder, and then I think we're gonna give it a shot. Alrighty, here we are in the nether again, with the sound of the wonderful ghasts in the background and these nether portals. And this is what we're gonna be building. This is where all the mobs get funneled, right there. And we're gonna hook it up to my um, automatic experience grinder, which will work actually very well here in the nether. Um, there are just a few things you can't you can't place water buckets and so it's going to be a little bit different because of that but it should act relatively similarly even though you can't actually do that. Um, I am missing a dispenser so when it's nighttime I'm gonna have to go back to the overworld to find some of the um, spiders and kill them so that I can get a dispenser so that we can actually finish the farm but as it is this is gonna work out pretty well we can go ahead and put in this lava bucket here and cover that up right there so that we can't fall in. And now we've got our TNT. So we put a TNT block right there and light it and it'll make all the mobs die. Which is good. That's what we want. We want to kill them. Actually, I died once already doing this. I didn't lose anything, but I ran into a random lava source block in the middle of this netherrack and I don't like that the nether generates that way. Lag spike. But, um, luckily I blocked it off before I burned to death, so I didn't lose, like, anything. Um, so if we turn this on... Perfect! Perfect! That's exactly what we wanted. Now we can go ahead and put glass right there. lose any redstone. Don't worry, I don't think I lost any. That's good. Just gonna chill up here for a little bit uh, until that lava clears out of the way. Alright. Um, perfect. Okay, it's gonna work. Now the last thing we have to do is set up the pistons up at the top. See, I want this clock hooked up right here, and it looks like that's not going to be very difficult. When we hit this, it's going to cause a lot of lag, and be very, very loud, but you can see, I don't want to go in there, but you can see it pushes any mobs that fall down in here get pushed into that one by one space down, way down there. So, that's exactly what we wanted. But yeah, all that we need is that dispenser right there and it's it's done. The dispenser there and whatever goes right there and it is a done farm. So, I'm going to head back to the overworld and see if we can find any spiders and then I'll show you this thing in action. For a world on hard difficulty, I'm not seeing very many mobs. I just need like one more string and I can make a bow and a dispenser and... There! There! Finally! Finally! Spider! Die! Perfect! Alright, now we're finally gonna get done with something, so... I'm on my way back and I'll see you when we've got a complete experience grinder. 
Alrighty, here we go. The zombie pigment is here to greet us. And we're on our way through the portal. Lag. Lag. Gotta get down. Gotta get down. Turn on the clock. It's got our TNT. Come on, light it. Step back. That's the way to get experience. Forget about potions and punching. Let's use TNT. Yes! This thing works. This thing works. Oh, yes. Alrighty. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with this. Check out what we got. Even a carrot. Wow. Alright. Um... We've got some interesting stuff. Um, I'm definitely going to be AFKing between episodes. It's within range of my fish farm, so I can fish while I do this, and that's really great. Um, I think that may be... All right. Let's hit it again. Any more? No more? Alright. Um... But I think that we've got to call it quits for this episode now. It's been going for quite some time, but we did get a lot done, a lot of useful stuff. We started up our nether hub, and, um, yeah. So, um, this is my design. I'll definitely put links for, to the tutorial down in the description, um, and I just proved that it works in the nether as well as the overworld even though the overworld one requires water um, so I'll also put links down in the description to Panda's AFK fish farm really really awesome tutorial and really really great design nice and small and um, yeah I think that's it between episodes, I'll definitely be AFKing at both of those. So, thank you so much for watching, fellows. I really hope you enjoyed, and until next time, so long, and keep on blowing up all those mobs. <laughs>